Welcome back to the Simulator Series. In today's episode, we are going to be creating the Shop GUI, which is going to contain our game passes and developer products in our game. Now, at this point, we're 43 episodes into the series. Do I really need to do the same intro that I've done every single episode before this? If you enjoy the video, smash the like button. And if you want to gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode while also supporting me, there's a link down below in the description of my Patreon. Feel free to join that if you want to. And with that quite possibly being the quickest intro that we've ever had in this entire series, let's hop right into it. Now, let's go ahead and start off by hopping directly into Roblox Studio. And since we're creating a GUI in this episode, let's of course go inside of the start GUI and add in a brand new screen GUI to this. Now that we've added the brand new screen GUI, let's go ahead and rename it and we're going to rename this to shop. And then let's make sure that we update the reset on spawn property and set that to false. And then we'll throw in a frame into this. Let's then go ahead and resize this. Now we want this to be pretty large. So on the X scale, I'm going to set that to 0.37 while on the Y scale, I'm going to set that to 0.6. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and center it. Now, of course, to save us some time, let's go ahead and grab the exit bond from one of our other GUIs. So I'm going to go inside of the Rebirth Shop GUI, open up the frame, and inside of here we have the exit text bun. Let's go ahead and copy that and paste that directly into the frame, just like that. Now that we've done that, I want to increase the size of this a little bit. So on the X, I'm going to set this to 0 0.075, and on the Y, we're going to set that to 0 0.125. So that's expanded just a little bit. We also want to move this up a little bit as well. So on the Y scale position, we're going to set that to 0 0.015. And now the exit bun's appearing just a little bit from the top and from the right as well. So that's looking pretty good. Next, what we're going to do is throw another frame inside of here and we're going to actually rename this one to clicks now for the size of this we want it to be the entire width and height of the parent frame so we're going to set both of those on the scale to one now that we've resized it let's go ahead and update the background color and we're going to set this to a nicest yellow and since we've done that we can go back to our original frame and we're going to set the background transparency of this one to one now inside of our clicks frame we want to add a text label into this but realistically the properties of this text label are going to be the same as most of the ones that we used before so i'm also going to steal this for the rebirth shop gy i'm going to grab the title text label and then i'm just going to paste that directly inside of our clicks frame. Now for the text of our title text label, we're going to say get clicks instantly with an exclamation mark. We'll then resize this. So on the X scale, I'm going to set that to 0.5 and on the Y, we're going to make this just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.085. Now we also want to reposition this towards the top left of our GUI. So we're going to reset the anchor point both back to zero. And then on the X and Y scale of the position, we're going to set both of these to 0 0.015. So now it's appearing at the top left of our frame. We'll then update the text X alignment and we're going to set that to left. And now that we've done that, the title text label is looking pretty good. If you want to, you could adjust the stroke a little bit. If you want to give it a little bit more of a stroke, we can make that 0.8. And I think that looks good as well. And then something else that I actually forgot, the exit button. We need to update the Z index of this exit button so that it appears above the other frames. So what we're going to do is set the Z index of the exit button to two. And now it appears over top of all the other frames. Cool. So now that we're good with the title text label, we're going to duplicate this and then we'll rename this one to be called subtitle. Now for the text of this, we're going to say each product can be purchased in Infinitely. We're then going to want to move this down a little bit below our title text label. So let's go ahead and update the position on the Y scale to be 0 0.095. And now that we've done that, let's also resize it as well. So on the X scale, we're going to set this to 0.85. And then on the Y scale, we're going to set this to 0 0.065. So it's a little bit less tall than the title text label. Next, what we'll do is throw another frame inside of here, and we're going to rename this to container. Now for the size of this on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.97. And on the Y scale, we'll go with 0.8. We then want to reposition this and horizontally, we want to center this. So we're going to set the X scale of the anchor point and the position to 0.5. But then we just want to move this down a little bit. And you could actually manually adjust this yourself if you want to. But personally, I think the Y of 0.179 looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that right there. Next, what we can do is set the background transparency of the container frame to one. So we no longer see it. We can then throw in a UI grid layout inside of here. And then we can also throw a text bun inside of the container as well. We'll, of course, rename the text bun to be called template. And then let's start working with the UI grid layout. Now, I plan to display six different click products the player can purchase at a single time. So when it comes to the cell size on the X scale, we're going to go with 0.32. And on the Y scale, we're going to go with 0.475. Now we'll also set the horizontal alignment to center as well as the vertical alignment. We can then duplicate this a couple of times and we'll duplicate it about five times so that we can see what six actually looks like. And now let's adjust the cell padding. Now I just want there to be a tiny bit of spacing between them. So on the X scale, I'm going to set that to 0 0.01. And on the Y scale, I'm going to set that to 0 0.02. And surprisingly, it almost looks like the padding didn't change at all. And I think that looks pretty good. So now that we have the UI grid layout all set up, we can then go ahead and delete all the other templates, just leaving one. Now with this template, what we're going to do is set the text to nothing. For the background color, we're going to go with a lighter gray. So something like that. Next, what we can do is throw a frame inside of here. And we're going to rename this frame to be called bottom. Now for the background transparency of this, what we're going to do is take this gray color 
right here, and then just make it a little bit darker. So something like that. Now for the size of this on the X scale, we're going to set that to one, whereas on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.2. Now, of course, because this is named the bottom, we want this to appear towards the bottom of the bun. So we're going to set the position on the Y scale to 0.8, and that makes it appear at the bottom of the bun. Next, what we'll do is throw an image label inside of here, and we're going to rename this to icon. For the size of this, we're going to go with 0.65 on both the X and the Y scale. We then want to set the scale type to be fit. We can also set the image of this as well. And the image that we're going to go with is the clicker bun icon right here. We can then set the background transparency of this to one. And now for the position, we want this to almost be all centered, except for vertically. Because of the bottom frame that we have right here, we want this to appear a little bit further up on the text bun, because if we have it centered, then it might overlap the bottom frame that we actually have. So for both the anchor points, I'm going to set that to 0.5. For the position on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.5. And then on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.425, so that it appears just a little bit above the bottom frame, like we were talking about. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and duplicate the title text label and drag that inside of the template. We can then rename this text label to be called price. Now for the text of this, let's just go ahead and say something like 1000 R money symbol. We can then update the text color and we're going to make this a green. So something like that. If you want to, you can update the text stroke, but I think that's fine how it is. For the text X alignment though, we want to also update this and we want to set it to the opposite of what it currently is. So it's currently left and we want to make that right. Let's then resize this a little bit and we just want to make this a tiny bit taller. So on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.115. And now we want to position this at the top right hand corner of our bun. So on the X scale, we're going to set this to 0.465. And now that we've done that, the price is appearing at the top right hand corner of the bun. That does look a little bit ugly though, because I forgot one zero on the 1000. And now when we look at it, I think that looks pretty good. Next, what we're going to do is duplicate the price text label once again. This time we're going to bring it into the bottom frame and then we'll rename this to be called amount. Now this time we're going to update the text color and we want it to actually be a yellow. And for the text of this, we can say something like plus 999M. Then for the text X alignment, we're going to set that to center. For the position, we're of course going to want to center this. So let's just set everything to 0.5, just like that. We then want to resize it. And for the size on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.8, whereas on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.9. And now that we've done that, that text label is looking pretty good. And I think honestly, this entire bun is looking pretty good as well. There's just slight improvements that we can make. So what we're going to do is inside of the bun, we're going to throw in a UI corner. Now for the corner radius, we're going to set this to 0.05 so that it makes the corners a little bit more round. And then we'll duplicate that and put that inside of the bottom frame. Now we want to increase the corner radius a tiny bit. So we're going to set this to 0.2 and that helps curve the bottom frame corners. And I think that makes it look a lot better. Now that we're pretty much done with the template frame, what we can do is duplicate it a couple of times, look at it, see how it looks. Do we want to make any changes to it? Or do we think it's all good? Personally, I think it's all good. So I'm going to delete all the templates, just leaving one. Now you might not have realized this already, but the way that we're going to be setting this GUI up is that each of the different categories in our shop is going to have its own frame. So for instance, clicks is just one category that players can browse through in our shop. Some other categories that we have are the game passes, the pets, the boosts, and also spins as well. And each of those are going to be contained within their own frames inside of this frame frame object right here as well. That's why we set the background transparency of the main frame to one. And then we'll set the background color of all the other frames to their own color, because that's the way we're going to display the GUI this time. Now, next, what we're going to do is actually start creating all the buns for browsing different categories within the shop. So what I'm going to do is create another frame and we're going to rename this frame to buns. So for the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.115. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.965. Now we want to center this vertically. So let's go ahead and set that to 0.5 on the anchor point right there and 0.5 on the Y scale position right there. Now we also want to move this frame so that it's on the left side of our main frame. And how can we do that? Well, we're going to update the X scale of the position and we're going to set that to negative 0.125. And now we can see that there's a little bit of space between the two frames right here. Then what we'll do is throw in a UI grid layout inside of the buns frame. And along with the UI grid layout, we'll also throw an image bun inside of the buns frame as well. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and check out the UI grid layout. Now for the cell size on the X scale, we're going to set that to one because we want to be the entire width of the frame. But for the height, well, we want to be able to fit about five different buns inside of here. And we don't really care if vertically they extend past the frame that they're held inside of. So what I'm going to do is set the Y scale to 0 0.2. Let's then go ahead and actually duplicate the image buns just a couple of times. And now we can work on the cell padding. So the X of the cell padding doesn't actually matter because the X isn't going to be affected here. But with the Y, we're going to go with 0 0.015. So there's just a little bit of space in between them. Additionally, going down to the alignments, we're going to set all of those to center. And now I think that's a nice little setup. So what I'm then going to do is delete all the image buns except for one. We can then also set the background transparency of our buns frame to one so that we no longer see it. Then go into the first image bun ourself. We're going to rename this bun to be called pets. Now for the background transparency of the bun, we're going to set that to one. For the image of this bun, we're actually going to go with the menu bun background white. And now that we've done that, we're going to update the image color to be a kind of brightish blue. Let's then also set the scale type 
type to be fit, and that looks pretty good. Next, what we're going to do is inside of this button, we want to throw in an image label, and we're going to rename this to be called icon. Now, for the image of this icon, we're actually going to go with the pet icon right there. We'll then set the background transparency to 1, because we, of course, don't want to see that. We'll also set the scale type to fit instead of stretch, and then let's also resize this a little bit. So, on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.7, while on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.65. Let's then go ahead and reposition this. Now, horizontally, we want to center that, so we're going to set the X there to 0.5, as well as the X scale right there to 0.5. And then vertically, we almost want this to be centered, but we also have to fit a text label towards the bottom of this button as well. So we need to give that text label a little bit of its own room as well. So for the position on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.1 to give it a little bit of spacing from the top. Next, what we want to do is throw a text label inside of here. But what I'm going to do is grab the title text label from our clicks frame, and I'm going to paste that directly inside of the pets button. We can still leave this just called title. It really doesn't matter, but we're going to set the text of this. And for the text of this, we want to just say the word pets. Now going down to the text X alignment, we want to make that center. And then for the text stroke transparency, I think I'm going to set that to 1. We can then go ahead and resize this. On the X, we're going to set that to about 0.85. And on the Y, we're almost going to set it to 0.2, but instead we're going to set that to 0.19. For the position, we of course want to center this horizontally, so let's go ahead and set the X right there to 0.5 and the X right there to 0.5. But of course, when it comes to the Y, we want this to appear a little bit below the icon image label and then still above the bottom of the pet's button. So for the Y, we're going to set that to 0.765. And now that we look at it, that looks pretty good. So so now that we finish our first bun, it's going to be even easier to create all the buns after this. What we're going to do is go ahead and select the bun and then duplicate it. For a second bun, we're going to rename this one to be called Passes. What we then want to do is update the image color of this bun, and we're going to make this a nice little red color. Then we can update the image of the icon image label, and we're going to set that to the shop icon. For the title, let's go ahead and update the text. This time we want to say Passes. And now that bun's looking pretty good. We can then duplicate this again. This time we'll create the boost bun. For the image color of this, we're going to kind of go with a darker blue. Blue. For the icon, we're going to use the star icon right there. And for the text of the title text label, we're going to set this to say boosts. Cool. We can then duplicate that again. This time we'll rename this one to be called clicks. For the image color here, we're going to go with a nice little yellow. We'll then update the image of the icon image label to be this clicker button icon right there. And for the text of the title text label, we are going to say clicks. Now we can duplicate this one more time. The last one is going to be called spins. The image color of this is going to be a nice little orange. For the image of the icon image label, we're going to set this to the rebirth icon small. And then for the text of the title text label, we're going to set this to be spins. Awesome. And now that we've done that, all of our buns have actually been created. Now we're actually pretty much done with creating this UI for right now. Now you might be thinking we've only created the clicks category frame here. Why haven't we created the other ones? Well, as we can see, we have five different categories that we want to create. The frame for each category is almost entirely unique from the previous one. So if we were to create every single frame in this single episode, not only would this episode be a lot longer, but then when we get around the scripting each of the individual categories, considering we created the GUI so long ago, we're going to forget a bunch of stuff. So how I plan on going about it is first we're going to start off with clicks, we'll then go to a different category, create that GUI, script all of that functionality, and then we'll continue to keep going from there to the next one and then to the next one. The Game Pass system is going to tie into a ton of other systems in our games, so those episodes themselves are probably going to be very long and there's so much other things for us to do that it seemed like the way that I chose to go about it would hopefully be the best way for everybody. With that being said though this isn't the only GUI that we're actually going to be creating during this episode. In addition to creating the screen GUI we also wanted to create a service GUI which we can display click packages on that players can click on in our game to purchase clicks that way as well. So what I'm going to do is actually set the enable property of our shop GUI we just created to false so that we can actually see on our screen. Then what I'm going to do is insert a sign model that we had created for the series. Now, if you want to get this model, it's entirely free. There's a link down below in the description of my Patreon where you can download all the free models that we're including in this. And then, of course, just insert the sign model into your game as well. So now that we've added this model into here, we can use this while we create the GUI to see what it will look like when we display it on the model that we're actually going to display it on. So going back to our screen GUI right here, we can collapse this frame right here. And then inside of the screen GUI, we're going to actually add a brand new service GUI to this. We'll rename the service GUI to be called Clicks. And then for the Adorni property, we actually want to set that to the sign model. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and throw a frame inside of here. Of course, for the size of the frame, we want that scaled. So let's go ahead and set that to 1, 0, 1, 0. Now, if the Adorni property is still not set, make sure that you expand the model. And then more specifically, we want to set that to the board part inside of the sign model, just like that. Cool. So now that we've done that, we can actually see the frame right there. Now, continuing through the properties on the Surface GUI, we do want this to be enabled. The face should be front unless you made any changes yourself. Light influence 1 is good, but we also want to 
set, reset on spawn to false. Now, going back to the frame, what we're then going to do is throw in a UI grid layout inside of here. And then we can also throw some text buttons inside of here as well, which we're going to rename this one to be called template. Now, going to the UI grid layout, similar to how we displayed six packages in our screen UI, we also want to display six packages in the service UI for clicks that the player can actually purchase. So for the cell size on the X, we're going to set that to 0.975. And on the Y, we're going to set that to 0.16. Let's then also set the background transparency of the mainframe to one so that we can more so see what the template buttons really looking like here. And then let's duplicate this five times so that we have six templates total. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and update the cell padding. And on the Y, the cell padding, we're going to set that to 0.005. So there's just a tiny bit of spacing between each of them. Then going down to the alignment, we're going to set everything to center. And now that we've done that, we're going to delete every template text button, just leaving one. We're going to update the background color of the template to be a darkish blue slash kind of black color. We'll then also set the text of the text button to be nothing. So that's just a blank string. Then inside of the template, we're going to go ahead and throw in an image label. We're going to rename this to be called icon. For the image of it, we're actually going to go with the clicks boost icon. For the scale type, we of course want to make sure that we set that to fit. For the background transparency, we're going to set that to one. Then before we begin actually sizing it, let's go ahead and add a frame inside of here. And we're going to call this icon BG. BG of course standing for background. Now with the background color of this, we want to set it to a lighter blue. And then we're going to actually throw the icon image label inside of that frame right there. For the size of the icon image label, we're going to set that to 0.75 on both the X and the Y. And then we're going to center that. So 0.5 on all the anchor points and 0.5 on all of the scaled positions. Now going back to the icon BG frame, we're going to go ahead and resize this. And for the size of this, we're going to set that to 0.15 on the X scale and 0.85 on the Y scale. Now we do want to reposition this, but to make our lives easier, the way that we're going to reposition this is by actually using a UI list layout. Before we start messing with the UI list layout, we also want to add a text label inside of here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a text label from one of our frames and paste that directly inside of here. Now we're going to rename this text label to be called amount. For the text of this, we're going to say plus 100 M. We also want to make sure that the text X alignment is set to left as well, which this one was already set to left because we copied and pasted it. Now for the size of this, we want to make this a little bit smaller on the X. So we're going to set that to 0.3 and on the Y, we want to make it the entire height. So we're going to set that to one. Now going back to the UI list layout, we're going to play around with this a little bit. So for the fill direction, we want to set that to horizontal and for the vertical alignment, we're going to set that to center. Cool. Now that we've done that, we can mess with the padding a little bit. And honestly, it almost feels like there's enough spacing between the text label and our icon BG frame, but I'm going to add a tiny, tiny bit more. So I'm going to set the padding to 0.01. Now that looks pretty good, but the icon background appears just a little bit too close to the left for my liking. So what I'm going to do is throw in a UI padding inside of our template. And for the scale of the padding left, I'm going to set that to 0 0.01. And now there's just a tiny bit of padding on the left side so that the icon BG frame is no longer touching the left side. And now that we've done that, let's go inside of the icon BG frame and we're going to throw in a UI corner to this. For the corner radius, we're going to set that to 0.1. And then we can duplicate this and throw this inside of the template frame as well. And we're going to also leave this at 0.1 as well because I think that looks good for both of them. Now, honestly, I think this is looking pretty good. So we can duplicate the template a couple of times and just see exactly what it looks like. And personally, I think these buns actually look really nice. So then what we'll do is delete all the templates, just leaving one. And for right now, we are done with creating this GUI. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that all being said, in the next episode, we're going to begin scripting these GUIs and start adding in the click developer products. And as usual, if the video did help you out, make sure you smash the like button. If you want to support me and game access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode, there's a link down below the description to the Patreon and you guys can go check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.